where or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth to help you that. Yes. Are right, you going to be seated? And then can you tell us your first and last name and spell your first and last name for the record? Christy Gibson Marshall, K R I S T Y G I B S O N hyphen M A R S H K L L. Okay. Good afternoon, Christy. Hello. It's okay if I call you Christy, right? Of course. Yes. All right. Um, Christy, can you tell the jury what you uh, what your job is? I'm an assistant principal at Oxford High School. Okay. And how long have you been in administration? Just in administration? Yes. Um, oh my heavens. Twenty years. And were you? Did you do something else before yeah. that? I was a teacher prior to that. And where were you teaching? Oxford High School and Oxford Elementary, Oxford Intermediate School. Have you ever taught anywhere except in the Oxford School District? No. All right. And so a grand total of how many years so far? 29 years. All right. Uh, Christy, in all of those 29 years, had you ever experienced um, an active shooter situation? No. Until November 30th? Correct. You had not? No, I have not. Okay. Uh, what kind of training had you received in an active shooting situation before November 30th? We have our, our ALICE training, um, which is alert, lockdown, inform, communicate, evacuate. Um, okay, and how, how, about how many years have you received that training? Um, I started Sorry. getting it in the elementary. I'm going to object to the relevance of how long they've been receiving the training. I'm laying foundations because I'm going to ask her later why she, what she did, and I'm, I'm just laying a foundation runner. Yeah, I'll allow. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, how many years had you been trained in that? Um, I started that training in the elementary school, so probably close to 10 years. Okay, and when you receive that training, to does everybody receive it, just administrators, or does it include students, teachers? It includes students and teachers. Okay. Yes. Do you uh, know, do you know the student um, that was the shooter on November 30th? I do. Okay. We refer to him as the shooter. Uh, how long had you known, that was the James Crumbly's son? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Before November 30th, had you ever met James Crumbly? Uh, probably in, I was Ethan's elementary school teacher or <coughs> principal. Okay. Uh, do you have a specific memory of it or you just, you're not sure? No, I just, uh, I don't have a specific memory, no. Okay. Let's go back to just um, James Crumbly's son. How long had you known him? He transferred to our elementary in fourth grade, so... Five years. Okay. And you eventually became an administrator in the high school. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, on that day, in November 30th, as part of your uh, assistant principal duties, what, what are you doing throughout the day? I, I know you've, you're probably doing a lot, <laughs> but um, what are your responsibilities, particularly during passing time? Um, during passing time, we are just monitoring the hallways and making sure that people are um, safely getting from one place to the other. Just talking to kids, connecting with kids, checking in on students. And, and Chrissy, how would you describe how you show up in the building for, for kids? Um, my goal is to connect with students. Students make the day. Like, they are, um, they just bring so much fun and life to our building. So connecting with the kids and checking on them and making sure they're doing good and um, just connecting them to each other and, and, and it, it, that's where our community is built is within our schools is okay. that young age. And I, even though you just testified you never had an active shooter situation, you did have a drill? Well, there, were, there were drills, I assume. I don't know though. Yes. Okay. What are you trained to do when the school goes on lockdown? I'm trained to lock down. And can you tell the jury what that means? That means to um, take cover, 
to barricade the classroom door to um, ensure the safety of the students and the those around me. Okay. You just testified that you think you probably met James Crumbly. Do you have a, a, a specific memory of meeting him? I don't. I remember getting an email when Ethan was um, in el leaving elementary school asking about a report card. Yeah. And what did you respond, if you remember? Um, I responded how to get the report card and to give Ethan a hug for me. Okay. But he wasn't in your school at that time? He was leaving, going to middle school. Okay. And do you know, was he in the district the entire time? No. Like, what, what were the years that, that uh, James Crumbly's son was in the Oxford School District, if you know? Fourth grade through um, high school. Okay. Directing your attention to November 30th, 2021, um, approximately 1250, uh, can you tell the jury where you were and what you were doing during that time? I was in the cafeteria supervising lunches. Um, it's a great time to be able to connect with kids. Kids are not in classrooms being super focused. They get to laugh and joke with you. And so it's a really good time to just connect with kids this lunchtime. Okay. And at some point, did you leave the cafeteria? I did. And where did you go? I went to... Um, Before you look at the map, okay, the sorry. looks at the map, can you tell me exactly what where you went and describe it first. Okay, so I Whenever went... Whenever you put something up on the screen, as you know an educator, that means that people are looking at the screen yes. and that. I went to um, the senior window. I was headed towards the senior, senior window. I didn't quite get all the way there prior to... And what what's the senior window? Senior window is a little area in our school that our seniors kind of hang out and it's like their little status symbol. Okay. And you like, is that where you, you station yourself during passing time at that time? A lot of times I do, just to make sure that, that they're allowing people to get traffic to go through. A lot, somebody is almost always stationed there to make sure that it's... People meaning underclassmen? Underclassmen. Okay. Yeah. Sweet little freshman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Drawing your attention to the map, which was previously, previously admitted Exhibit 9, Your Honor. Uh, what is that? Uh, that's our school. Okay. And... Can you point to the senior, where you were at that time, and Mr. Keister already knows that, so I think he's going to direct your attention with the, the magnifying. Yeah, so I started in the commons area that he has, he has highlighted there, and then I came down, um, I don't even think this hallway has a, a number, but it's um, be between the choir room and the um, guitar piano room, um, and then ended down by the, the senior courtyard hallway area there. Which is right there where he... Yeah, highlighted that little... The, right in front of the courtyard is where the senior window technically is, but I stopped right here at this... Right um, there? Yeah, at this little diamond area. Okay. And this was during passing time? Yes. All right, what's typically going on during passing time? Is, it, is it enough time for kids to get from one place to another, yeah. or are people yes. rushing? Yes. Um, some kids rush. They, it depends on a lunch, another lunch is happening. Um, the rush to get into the lunch line, but... Um, and Molly Dinell previously testified that there's a schedule um, where kids are actually going to class and lunch... Your Honor, I'm to the form of the question. Your Honor, it's, I'm trying to lay a foundation. I, I, I'm not trying to suggest an answer to, to the witness, which is, which is why we don't allow leading questions. So if I can just get through that, then I will ask for the direct question. There's three different lunch periods, right? Correct. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Um, so... You were in the, did you say you were in the senior hall during, around this time of 12.50? Yes. Okay. Was there uh, any moment where you noticed something unusual? Yeah. Um, usually I would go all the way to the senior window, but I paused at the, the, di the, the diamond there just because there was a lot of, there were a lot of kids rushing, um, laughing and rushing, and it was bizarre to me. I didn't know what was happening at that time. Okay. You just testified some kids rush, but your answer just now suggests that the rushing seemed something bizarre. Very different. Okay. Can you, can you describe to the jury what you mean by that? Okay. So, um, rushing to lunch is like a Olympic power walk situation. 
and um, running out of the building is different. So it was, it appeared as though, I don't want to say they're running out of the building because I was not anywhere near a door to know where they were going, but there was more running and laughing going on. And what did you think at that moment? I thought it was very odd. Okay, yeah. What did you do next? Um, I asked a couple of students what was happening. They didn't know. Um, and then a student came by um, running and saying, get the hell out of here. And then... To you? To anybody. Just announced it in that area. Did that seem unusual? Extremely. Okay. Uh, at some point, did you get information that there was an active shooter? Not at that point, no. Okay. So the student that you mentioned comes towards you running and yells, Get the hell out of here. And what do you do next? I asked a couple of kids what was going on. They didn't know. Again. So what did you do? Well, almost immediately after that, after I asked the kids, um, the PA system went off and said to take Alice protocol. So, so that was, was that the first time you, you were alerted that there was an active shooter? But that was the first time I knew something was happening. Okay. Still did didn't you, know it was an active shooter. Did you know, okay, fair. Did you know if it was a drill or a real um, Alice? I didn't know. I just knew that there were, we were going into Alice protocol. Okay. Before I ask you um, some more questions, I just want to stop here because I forgot to, to ask you so we can get a good picture. The school holds about how many students on in one day? Uh, about 1,800. Okay. And this might not be a fair question, and just tell me if it's not. Mm -hmm. How, what kind of familiarity do you have with the general student body? I try to know everybody's name. So I um, am pretty familiar with the students. Okay. Uh, when you heard the announcement, were you aware of who made the announcement? It sounded like Steve Wolf. And who was that? That's our, that was our principal at the time. Okay. Uh, what did you do? I um, started to check the hallway to make sure it was getting cleared. Um, the hallways cleared extremely fast. So I walked um, toward, toward the 400 hallway. I got on the walkie and said, there are students running. I'm not sure what's happening. Um, but the hallways cleared, just completely cleared out. So then I turned down the did you, did, had you Did you hear anything else at that point? No. Okay. Uh, so you're in the 400 hallway, did you say? Correct. Okay. So starting at, at the top of the 400, yeah. And the announcement was to implement Alice protocol. Did you say that? Yes. Okay. And is that what you did? I made sure the kids did. Okay. I did not. What did you do? I um, went down the 400 hallway to make sure that the hallway I was closest to, students were taking cover. They did very quickly. Um, one student came up very um, late to the situation, and I made sure that he got into a classroom. He asked if it was a drill. I said, it doesn't matter if it's a drill. you got to take cover. Um, At this point in the hall, when you were walking down these halls, were the classroom doors open or closed? Closed. Okay. So you got that student in the classroom. That teacher was locking the door. Oh. So that teacher was out locking the door, and I put him in that classroom with that teacher. Okay. Uh, and then did you go into lockdown? I did not. Okay. Tell the jury what you did. I, after um, that door was secured, I could smell what I called... Um, cap gun at the time, um, but I now know it was gunpowder. And before that, I just want to stop you, before that, did you hear anything? Um, I, I, I don't think I had yet, I can't remember the order, but then shortly after that I heard gunshots. Okay, at this point, what kind of familiarity did you have with firearms? And the reason I'm asking is, did you know when you heard that sound what it was? Um, I, yeah, I knew what it was. Um, but I didn't have a lot. Of, I don't have a lot of experience with firearms. Okay, so you're hearing the sound. You you smell what you think is cap gun. Right. Yeah. So 
so weird, but yeah. And so then you go into lactose. I did not. I tell the jury what you did. I went towards the gunfire to see what was happening because I wanted to make sure that our kids were safe. Okay. Can you tell us and relate where you, what, where you were to the mat in terms of which hallway, which classroom, so that we can direct the jury to the right? So I was um, down around uh, room 408 and 409 and then um, moving towards 416. Okay. And then when I got to 416, at the end of that hallway, I turned left towards where the gunfire had happened. So you ran towards the sound? I did. Okay. What did you see, Christy? I saw a student on the ground, um, so I approached that direction. I, I was concerned about the student on the ground. I couldn't tell who the student was, but I saw a student laying on the ground. Was did a, you see anything else in the hallways at this point? Um, at that moment, I don't believe I did quite yet. Shortly after I did, like very quickly. Any other people? Um, shortly after recognizing that there was a student on the ground, there was a student coming my direction. Okay, had, but any other staff, administration, teachers, no, students? No, just me. Okay. Uh, now, the judges made very specific rulings that you cannot talk about any sort of highly suffering. So I want to make sure that we, we describe what happened, but in a way that, that comports with her order. Did you approach that student? The student on the ground? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, and describe um, how the student was was lying down, face face down, face up. He was um, he was face down and um, looking a, away down. Well, face down. His head was more turned towards that opposite of where I was. Um, so so when away I, from. Me away from okay. me. And there was a garbage can in the way, so I moved the garbage can out of the way so I could get to him um, better. Um, and, and Chrissy, when you approached the student, did you have any, could you see any signs of injury? Did you know what happened to the student? Were you? I didn't know anything at that point, no. Okay. What did you do next? I looked up the hallway and I could see another student um, look like he was bringing his arm down. Um, my assumption was that that was probably the shooter. Um, and so what did you do? Uh, I let the office know in Milwaukee that I had eyes on the shooter. Okay. And were you instructed to do anything at that point? I, I don't remember. Would it have mattered? Probably not. Okay. I had a student at my feet. Okay. Tell the jury what you did. Um, the, the shooter was coming closer to me. As he got very close, I realized it was Ethan, and I, it didn't seem right to me, because Ethan always seemed like a sweet kid. I just couldn't picture that being him, so I talked to him. Um, as he walked by, I asked him if he was okay, what was going on. Um, I took a few steps down the hallway with him. Did you see that he was holding anything? Yeah, he had a gun in his hand. Okay. And, um... What did the shooter do? Did he look at you? Did he turn away? Did he speak to you? He looked away from me, which that made me... I knew for sure that at that point he was the shooter because he would have talked to me if, if he were in a... I, I, typically he would have said something to me. He would have talked to me. Okay. And, and I do have to ask, what? why didn't you take cover? There was a student that needed my help. Okay. So, at some point, were you alone in that space? Did the shooter pass you by? Did he stop? He kept walking. Um, I walked with him for up, um, just a couple of steps and a few, I don't know, probably, I can't even measure, probably 10 feet. And then I turned my back on him. I, I, I know this is ridiculous that I did, but I turned my back on him because I had a student that I needed to check on. Okay, and I, I'm sorry, I have to ask you to keep your voice up. Sorry. So I turned my back on him, 
Um, I wasn't sure where he went. He was past me. And then I went back to the student that was on the ground. Okay. At that point, could you identify who the student was? At that point, I rolled him over and I realized that, that it was Tate near. Did you notice if he was injured? At that point, I knew that he had a bullet <coughs> wound. That he had what? I'm sorry. He had a bullet wound entering in the, the back of his head and exiting in the front. Was he still alive? I hoped he was. I He was very gray, but I, I started to resuscitate immediately. Okay. He what had that? a pulse. What's that? He had a pulse. Okay. Uh, it, you knew him? Yeah. I, I had all of his brothers, and his mom was his mom was my PTO president. Um, I've known the family really well. Okay. What happened next? Um, I just began to give him rescue breaths. How long did that go on? You're on. May we approach? Next question, please. Mm -hmm. How, how long was it? I, I, I asked I asked what happened next year. I'm doing my best. Okay, what happened? Without saying what that experience was like for you, was there a moment when you stopped and what happened to make you stop? Um, I continued until um, they took him from me. Okay. And what happened next? Um, it, uh, Kurt News came up. Um, he had called on the walkie to see where I was. Is that the principal? That's one of the assistant principals. You know, if principals. I can just get some permission to lead just a little bit so we can move past this and, and comply with the course order. But I'm concerned about an objection so that I can get to the, what, what, I, I don't want to violate the course order. So I'm just going to ask a few leading questions so that we can move past that. What happened? Did somebody approach you at some point and ask you about the shooter's whereabouts? Um... Kim Potts came up and told me it was a drill, and pardon me, you guys, I'm so sorry. My students are going to hear this. It's horrible. But I told her it was not a fucking drill, that um, that someone had been shot, and she, um, and she kind of grabbed her gun and went... And I'm sorry, Christy, tell the jury who Kim Potts is because they don't know who Kim Potts is. She was um, a retired police officer who was our, our worked in our lunchroom. Okay. Yeah. So and she wasn't technically a security person. No. But she did carry a weapon. Yes. Okay. And um, she, so I just said he went that way, and I just kept waving my arm that okay. way. Okay. If we go back to the map, you were, at this point, when you were with Tate, what classroom were you around, if you if you know? So I would have been by um, room 223. Oh, actually, in that, see, there's this little um, space between 223 and 225. There's two doors. One goes into the courtyard and one goes out of the building. That's where Tate and I were. Okay. And when you say you pointed that way, which direction? Towards 225. I didn't know where he went. I just knew he went that direction. Okay. And so if Mr. Keys can... At least, so that way. Yes, okay. correct. All right. Uh, and? <coughs> I told Kurt News that same thing when he came up. Okay, that's what I was trying to get to. Yeah. At what point did Kurt, who's Kurt News? Kurt News is one of the other assistant principals. Um, he was responding to me on the, on the walkie to find out where I was. Okay, and at what point did he appear, if you know? Um... Just before Kim did, because he went into the courtyard to go see if he could get one of our um, medical staff to help. And then he came back out and realized that everyone's in lockdown, he can't go that way. So then he went out um, the other doors to get EMS. So between his, when he went into the courtyard and when he went to EMS, Kim had, had come down the hallway. Okay. And then Steve Wolf arrived shortly after that. I okay. feel terrible because they came to help me. They should have been in lockdown. 
Like you should have been locked up. I didn't need to spare others okay. either. Okay. All right. Uh, what what happened after that? You said eventually somebody took Tate away. The police arrived and. Um, um, Deputy Freiberg came up, and Deputy Freiberg was one of my parents at Lakeville. And when he came up to me, he, he recognized me right away and came up and asked me was what I needed. He was surveying the scene. Okay, what's Lakeville? Um, it's the elementary school I was the principal of. Okay. And um, I told Shane, Detective Freiberg, that it was Tate, because he knows the family really well, too. And Pierre Dizot took his breath away and he said, I'll be right back. And so then they went and secured the scene and that's when um, Ethan came out of the bathroom and was arrested. Did you see that? I did. They couldn't remember, they didn't know his name, they kept asking his name, so I went down and told them his name and then I came back to Tate because I didn't want to leave Tate. Okay. Uh, were you aware that that was the bathroom where Justin Schilling was killed? Did you know any, uh, did you see any other victims that day? Well, oh, strike that. Uh, at that point? At that point, no. Okay. Um, have you seen the, the video? Yes. Of, of you that day? Yes. Okay. Um, that's been marked as Exhibit 13, I believe. Okay. It's been admitted. And uh, I do want to alert um, we have alerted our victims in the, in the courtroom, Your Honor, but um, the media... Uh, yeah, we're not going to show this on TV, okay? Right. Your Honor, just for the record, I did have an objection to this. I'm just reading that objection for the reasons previously. Correct. Correct. We, and we discussed that. Yes, Thank Your Honor. You okay, so Exhibit 13 is not going to be shown on, on television. Or, um, and I, I think that uh, the victims who are present uh, know what video you're talking about. We, our victim advocates are there, and we prepare them. And they know that they can leave the courtroom. If that's what they wish to do. Is there any audio on this? No. no. And Christy, can you tell us when you come into image? The so, image? so I'm in the image there in the yellow sweater. Okay. Can you do the ability to think that? Right there? Yes. Okay. And then can you let us know when you see the student you described that came up to you? Right there, that was him running right there. And then the other students running behind him. Now mm. this video is, there's no sound, but this is, this is in real time. In terms of, you can yes. see that, well what do you, can you describe what you see in terms of the students' movements? They are running. Okay. So that's, that's when I said on the walkie that students are running. And okay. I didn't know what was happening. And then you'll notice that the hallway is clear almost immediately. Okay. This is when I go down the 400 hallway. Didn't you stop that? Who is that, Christy? That's Ethan. This is me telling the the teacher where there's the a teacher the here. I'm so I'm checking doors up at the top of the screen, and then a teacher came out, and then a student joined them. And then this is me coming. This <gasps> guy, bless you. Started smelling the. This is me telling them I smell cap gun and walking towards where I heard the shots. Okay. So right there is where I noticed Ethan. 
because I stepped aside and said I have eyes on the shooter. And at that point, had you observed Tate? I could see Tate on the ground. Yes. Okay, you can't see him in this picture though. Okay. No. See me move the garbage can. Is that is that Tate lying on the ground? That's Tate on the ground. Yes. And who are you looking at right then, down Ethan. that hallway? I'm looking at Ethan. And I'm talking to Tate at that point. And whose foot's, who do we see? Ethan's walking up to us. <coughs> now, from the time that you observed him, was he always walking at that pace, or was he ever running? He was always walking. And that's when I walked with him to talk to him. He wouldn't respond. And this is when, when I discovered it was Tate. If you could stop that for a second, who are those people? Those are the officers that I don't know which ones, but, and then it looks like Ken Weaver, I think it's Ken Weaver there. And is this after Tate was already taken away, this, this video, or is this? No, Tate was still there. I, I got up from Tate because they couldn't figure out who the student was, and I needed to tell them what his name was, so then okay, I so ran down to tell him his name, so and then the, I ran Hold down. on one sec. Is it at the top of the screen right there? Yes. What, what is that? That's... Right up there. That is Ethan um, <laughs> being arrested. Okay. So I went down to give them his name, and then I went right back to Tate. I think he was asking me more questions, and I said, I've got to get back. Nothing further at this time, Your Honor. Cross? No cross, Your Honor. Can she be excused, Your Honor? Yeah, you can step down.